Good evening, friends, and welcome to all who may be joining us this evening, as well as those of you who are finding your way to this worship video later on. I just want to make one comment beforehand. You will see that we are unmasked tonight. I want to assure you that we are being very careful, but everybody in this room right now has been fully vaccinated, and so we decided that to create a better uh, atmosphere for you, that we would be singing and reading tonight unmasked. Wherever and whenever you are watching, we welcome you into the gathering of all the saints in every time and place as we celebrate Christ's resurrection. Tonight, through story and song, we proclaim a God who continuously brings life out of death. Yes, certainly at Easter, but also throughout salvation history. Tonight, we experience again the heart of God's baptismal promise and the very center of our faith, that we are claimed and cleansed through the waters of holy baptism and continuously renewed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Tonight, we pray for all of God's children, asking God to give resurrection life to the world. If you would like to read along and sing along with our worship this evening, we invite you to download a service bulletin. You can find a link to that bulletin in your email if you are on our email distribution list or on the church's Facebook page, which you can find most easily by going to our webpage, which is stjohn-whitehall.org. If you haven't yet downloaded a bulletin, I encourage you to do so now and catch up with us as you are able. Friends, this is the night of salvation. With heart and soul and voice, let us proclaim the cornerstone of our faith, that Christ the Lord is risen indeed. Those of you who are regulars to our worship service, you'll be a little tickled by the fact that uh, though this is not live tonight um, because of some internet issues, we pre-recorded it, but that doesn't mean that the little goof-ups like the, uh, the, the candle lighter not lighting don't happen. So now we are ready to begin our service. I'm glad that we had that little pause because hopefully you've had an opportunity to download the bulletin and now you are ready to worship with us. The light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Thanks be to God.
us pray. O God, you are the creator of the world, the liberator of your people, and the wisdom of the earth. By the resurrection of your Son, free us from our fears, restore in us your image, and ignite us with your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A note about our lessons this evening. All of them will be read from The Message, a contemporary translation of the Bible by Eugene Peterson. A full Easter vigil has 12 readings from the Old Testament. Our vigil this evening has only three, the three which liturgical scholars have judged to be absolutely indispensable in telling the story of God's ongoing efforts to redeem the whole creation. The first lesson comes from Genesis and tells the story of creation, how God took chaos and emptiness and formed a world of order and abundance. Sometimes, more often than not, perhaps, in these COVID days, our world seems chaotic and empty. But let us pray that as we hear this lesson tonight, God will open our hearts to the new possibilities of order and abundance that God is bringing about even now. For if God created our world out of nothing, then surely God can recreate us. A reading from Genesis. First this, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke, light, and light appeared. God saw that the light was good and separated the light from the dark. God named the light day. He named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. God spoke, sky, in the middle of the waters, separate water from water. God made sky. He separated the water under the sky from the water above sky, and there it was. He named sky the heavens. It was evening, it was morning. Day two, God spoke. Separate, water beneath heaven, gather into one place, land appear. And there it was. God named the land earth. He named the pooled water ocean. God saw that it was good. God spoke. Earth. Green up, grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants, every sort of fruit-bearing tree. And there it was. Earth produced green seed-bearing plants, all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. It was evening, it was morning, day three. God spoke. Lights, come out. Shine in the heaven sky, separate day from night, mark seasons and days and years, lights in heaven sky to give light to earth. And there it was. 
God made two big lights, the larger to char take charge of day, the smaller to be in charge of night. And he made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up earth and oversee day and night to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening, it was morning, day four. God spoke. Swarm, ocean, with fish and all sea life. Birds fly throughout the sky over earth. God created the huge whales, all the swarm of life in the waters, and every kind and species of flying bird. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill ocean, birds reproduce on earth. It was evening, it was morning, day five. God spoke. Earth generate life, every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food. To all animals and birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. Heaven and earth were finished down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day. He made it a holy day because on that day, he rested from his work, all the creating God had done. This is the story of how it all started, of heaven and earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
It is not an accident that Christians celebrate Christ's Passover from death at the same time that our Jewish siblings celebrate their Passover. Both stories demonstrate God's longing to deliver us from oppression, to deliver us from fear, to deliver us from death. Let us pray that as we hear this lesson from the book of Exodus, God will open our hearts to claim the freedom that is our birthright as children of God. A reading from Exodus. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked them up and saw them, Egyptians coming at them. They told Moses, weren't the cemeteries large enough in Egypt so that you had to take us out here in the wilderness to die? What have you done to us, taking us out of Egypt? Back in Egypt, didn't we tell you this would happen? Didn't we tell you, leave us alone here in Egypt? We're better off as slaves in Egypt than corpses in the wilderness. Moses spoke to the people. Don't be afraid. Stand firm and watch God do his work of salvation for you today. Take a good look at the Egyptians today, for you're never going to see them again. God will fight the battle for you. And you, you keep your mouths shut. God said to Moses, why cry out to me? Speak to the Israelites. Order them to get moving. Hold your staff high and stretch your hand out over the sea. Split the sea. The Israelites will walk through the sea on dry ground. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the Egyptians keep up their stubborn chase. I'll use Pharaoh and his entire army, his chariots and horsemen, to put my glory on display so that the Egyptians will realize that I am God. The angel of God that had been leading the camp of Israel now shifted and got behind them and the pillar of cloud that had been in front also shifted to the rear. The cloud was now between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. The cloud enshrouded one camp in darkness and flooded the other with light. The two camps didn't come near each other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and God, with a terrific east wind all night long, made the sea go back. He made the sea dry ground. The sea waters split. The Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground, with the waters a wall to the right and to the left. The Egyptians came after them in full pursuit. Every horse and chariot and driver of Pharaoh racing into the middle of the sea. It was now the morning watch. God looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud on the Egyptian army and threw them into a panic. He clogged the wheels of their chariots. They were stuck in the mud. The Egyptians said, run from Israel. God is fighting on their side and against Egypt. God said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea and the waters will come back over the Egyptians, over their chariots, over their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. As the day broke and the Egyptians were running, the sea returned to its place as before. God dumped the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. The waters returned, drowning the chariots and riders of Pharaoh's army that had chased after Israel into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites walked right through the middle of the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall to the right and to the left. God delivered Israel that day from the oppression of the Egyptians. And Israel took, looked at the Egyptian dead washed up on the shore of the sea, and realized the tremendous power that God brought against the Egyptians. The people were in reverent awe before God and trusted in God and his servant Moses. Miriam, the prophetess, Aaron's sister, 
took a tambourine, and all the women followed her with the tambourines, dancing. Miriam led them in singing, Sing to God, what a victory! He pitched horse and rider into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Bible is serious business. But that doesn't mean that at times it isn't, well, fun and funny. In the next lesson from the book of Daniel, we hear about the blustery old King Nebuchadnezzar, who is pretty darn full of himself. But while he is busy puffing himself up, God is quietly going about the business of protecting the three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even going through fire for them. Let us pray that as we hear this lesson, God will open our hearts to the knowledge that humility and vulnerability are the keys to new life in the kingdom. A reading from Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar built a gold statue, 90 feet high and nine feet thick. He set it up on the Dura Plain in the province of Babylon. He then ordered all the important leaders of the province, everybody who was anybody, to the dedication ceremony of the statue. They all came for the dedication, all the important people, and took their places before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had erected. A herald then proclaimed in a loud voice, Attention, everyone! Every race, color, and creed, listen! When you hear the band strike up, all the trumpets and trombones, the tubas and baritones, the trom drums and cymbals, fall to your knees and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not kneel and worship shall be thrown immediately into a roaring furnace. The band started to play. A huge band equipped with all the musical instruments of Babylon and everyone, every race, color, and creed fell to their knees and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. 
Just then, some Babylonian fortune tellers stepped up and accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You gave strict orders, O king, that when the big band started playing, everyone had to fall to their knees and worship the gold statue, and, and whoever did not go to their knees and worship it had to be pitched into a roaring furnace. Well, there are some Jews here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you've placed in high positions in the province of Babylon. These men are ignoring you, O king. They don't respect your gods, and they won't worship the gold statue you set up. Furious, King Nebuchadnezzar ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be brought in. When the men were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar asked, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you don't respect my gods and refuse to worship the gold statue that I've set up? I'm giving you a second chance, but from now on, when the big band strikes up, you must go to your knees and worship the statue I have made. If you don't worship it, you will be pitched into a roaring furnace, no questions asked. Who is the god that can rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar. Your threat means nothing to us. If you throw us in the fire, the god we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up, O king. But even if he doesn't, it wouldn't make a bit of difference, O king. We still wouldn't serve your gods or worship that gold statue you set up. Nebuchadnezzar, his face purple with anger, cut off Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace fired up seven times hotter than usual. He ordered some strong men from the army to tie them up, hands and feet, and throw them into the roaring furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, bound hand and foot, fully dressed from head to toe, were pitched into the roaring fire. Because the king was in such a hurry and the furnace was so hot, flames from the furnace killed the men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to it, while the fire raged around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Suddenly, King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm and said, Didn't we throw three men bound hand and foot into the fire? That's right, O king, they said. But look, I, I see four men walking around freely in the fire, completely unharmed. And the fourth man looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar went to the door of the roaring furnace and called in, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the high God, come out here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked out of the fire. All the important people, the government leaders, and the king's counselors gathered around to examine them and discover that the fire hadn't so much as touched the three men. Not a hair singed, not a scorch mark on their clothes, not even the smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They ignored the king's orders and laid their bodies on the line rather than serve or worship any god but their own. <clears throat> Therefore, I issue this decree. Anyone, anywhere, of any race, color, or creed who says anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be ripped to pieces, limb from limb, and their houses torn down. There has never been a god who can pull off a rescue like this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
finally, we come to the Easter story in which Mary Magdalene encounters the risen Christ in the garden. At first, Mary weeps with bewilderment, pain, and grief. But when Jesus calls her name, he transforms her bewilderment into understanding. He heals her pain and he replaces her grief with joy. Let us pray that as we hear this story, we will hear God calling our names to open our eyes to see the risen Christ in our midst, to open our hearts to receive the healing we so long for, and to open our minds to the endless possibilities of resurrected life, both here and in the world to come. A reading from John. Early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. She ran at once to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, breathlessly panting. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left immediately for the tomb. They ran neck and neck. The other disciple got to the tomb first, outrunning Peter. Stooping to look in, he saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Simon Peter arrived after him, entered the tomb, observed the linen cloths lying there, and the kerchief used to cover his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but separate, neatly folded by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who had gotten there first, went into the tomb, took one look at the evidence, and believed. No one yet knew from the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples then went back home. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there, dressed in white, one at the head, the other at the foot of where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to her, Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Mister, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for him. Jesus said, Mary. Turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Jesus said, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples, I saw the master. And she told them everything he said to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. May we, like Mary, by faith behold him here among us. He who is 
the day who ends all night. As we celebrate Christ's victory over death, it is an ideal time for us to remember our own victory over death, won for us by Jesus' resurrection. It is therefore an ideal time for us to remember and give thanks for our own baptisms and to reaffirm our faith in our crucified and risen Lord. So let us join in prayer together. Merciful God, we thank you for making us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I, I renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> On this most holy night, we pray that God renew the world with the joy of new life. Responding to each petition, your mercy endures forever. We pray for the church, for all who serve in the church, for all who this night are baptized or reaffirm their baptismal faith, that the light of Christ illuminate us. 
Grant us your life, O God, our light. Your, your mercy, mercy endures, endures forever. forever. We pray for the earth, that you, your creative might repair all that has been harmed, and that we treasure what you have provided. Grant us your life, O God, our Maker. Your, your mercy, mercy endures forever. We pray for the nations of the world, that war and violence cease, that you liberate all who are oppressed, and that justice be granted to the disposed in every land. Grant us your life, O God, our refuge. Your, your mercy, mercy endures forever. forever. We pray for all who suffer from COVID, that the pandemic will abate, and that human societies will be restored to health and safety. Grant us your life, O God, our strength and our song. Your, your mercy, mercy endures forever. We pray for all who are sick and for all who are suffering that they might find remedy for their distress and that they be brought to wholeness in you. Grant us your life, O God, our stronghold. Your, your mercy, mercy endures forever. We pray finally for ourselves that you receive our prayers. You who stand with us in the fire, grant us your life, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy endures forever. We praise you for carrying all the faithful of the ages from death to life with Christ. Bring us at our end with them to rejoice at your everlasting banquet. Grant us your life, O God, our spirit. Your mercy endures forever. To you, living and loving God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one with whom we have been raised to new life, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, on earth, earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and may shine as a light in the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. <laughs>
peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.